guys, today's video is going to be the second Cruella video of the week. If you missed the first one, it is a hand-painted, realistic depiction of Emma Stone as Cruella and is absolutely one of my favorite designs I've ever done, especially that is hand-painted. It is just like, I'm, I'm so happy with it. But check that one out if you did miss it. I'll put a link to it in the description box below. Otherwise, this video is extreme. It is extra long. It is sculpted. It has Cruella on it that is really, really like up off the nail. There's some extra layers to it. Everything is kind of sculpted and pieced together. I hope you guys love this video and this particular design because it's Cruella and Cruella's awesome and the new movie is coming out today and who else is excited as I am? I mean, I'm just like so excited. But I hope you guys love this design and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. Bye! So I'm going to begin by making an extra long nail form by taking one nail form and cutting off the extension area of it and pressing it onto the tip of another nail form. And then I'm going to be just pre-folding these. I really like to pre-fold my forms, whether they're an extreme length or not. It just makes them a little bit more symmetrical and actually much easier to apply if you pre-pinch the form. At least in my opinion, I'm going to trim the edges of this nail to make it, or this form, to the nail to make it fit just a little bit better and a little bit more snug. And then I'm going to be sculpting a clear base on my nail form with clear acrylic. So this is going to be in a stiletto shape. So I'm just going to work that clear acrylic down, kind of going slow and steady, which is pretty much my motto for sculpting in general. I don't like to rush the process and end up with more filing. In the end, I like to sculpt with a little bit more precision and intention and then limit my filing later or minimize my filing later. But that's personal opinion. If you, yeah, you know, if you're a super confident extra long nail sculptor and you want to work with a size 20 brush and just blast this one out, then go for it. All the power to you. Me. I'm just a little bit more, I don't know. I'm the tortoise from the tortoise in the hair, I guess you could say, is my, my theory with this. So we have this clear base going all the way down the nail. And then after that, I'm going to take a very, very glittery red acrylic and I'm going to be just doing an overlay over the top of the whole thing. The idea for this overlay is that it creates a background color across the whole nail, but I know that the way that I have my design prepped, I can apply this color to the tip of the nail and it's not gonna show anyway. So once I get towards about the two thirds of the mark down the nail, I'm just gonna brush it out and kind of create a soft fade and not worry about applying the glitter all the way down because it won't show later anyways. And I'm going to be encapsulating this nail with a layer of clear acrylic. This is where I'm really going to build in my nail structure. I did tip my form so I have a hidden apex and if you guys want to know more about nail structure and hidden apexes, I can make a dedicated video to it. But for this one, it's just where there's a thickness that you don't necessarily see with your naked eye, but is built in to the nail. And then we're going to file this into shape because this is such a long nail and it is a stiletto. I am not using my e-file. I just filed it with my hand file. And so now... I'm going to be taking on my nail form backing. I'm going to be sculpting my Cruella. So this is not the new Cruella from the new movie, even though this nail is sort of inspired and dedicated to the new movie. This is the original cartoon Cruella that has held my heart for so long. And I am, I don't know, I've always loved Cruella. I've always loved the villains. And so... There are plenty different uh, Cruella designs on my channel. Actually, both my channels because I did a pair of painted shoes on my art channel that was Cruella. And I could put links to all of those past Cruella-themed videos in the description box below. But just know that me and Cruella, we go way back. So we have on the nail form backing, I'm going to start with a very, very light color, creamy, just essentially off-white color acrylic. And I'm going to sculpt her head, her neck, and her her torso in kind of a v-shape because she has a very low cut low cut dress and so we want that to kind of just go down and it goes like I said it's a good it's a good v-shape and if you want to you can sculpt it like I did and sort of build in where that v-shape is going to go or you can just sculpt her torso and fill in that v-shape later when you add the dress it's kind of you know whichever your preference is I usually like to do it this way where I just sculpt in the neckline with the color uh, with the flesh tone, but it's totally up to you. On her face, she has very sunken in eyes, so she's got this very intense forehead thickness that arches down and then goes down the bridge of her nose, ending with her upturned nose. And then after I have all that done, I'm not going to do any more sculpted in detail on her face, so I'm not going to sculpt in her eyelids, her eyes, her mouth. Um, on 
on her face with acrylic. I'm going to do all of that later with paint. So for this particular design, I'm just going to go through and that's all the detail I'm sculpting into her face. And then with some black acrylic, I'm going to be sculpting her dress and just taking that part way down. It's not going down quite as far as it will in the end, but later on, I do want to have a little bit of space to play around with it and help blend it into into the nail a little bit more smoothly. So I'm just gonna kind of give it a blunt end at this point and know that I'll add more to it later. So then still using my black acrylic, I'm going to be adding the black side to her hair. And this is something that I get questions about a lot about what, um, what you should do when you're doing a design and you wanna switch between two colors of acrylic that are very contrasting, like this one that goes from black to white. And the best recommendation I have for you is that I did all of my black acrylic first, as you just saw, and then I'm going to wipe and clean my brush multiple times, and then I'm going to switch to my white. So when I say wipe and clean it, one thing I like to do, and I even do this at the end, so I'm all done sculpting for, for the session, I will hold my brush in my monitor for... 30 seconds to a minute, which sounds weird. And as you're sitting there, 30 seconds to a minute feels like an eternity because you're just sitting there holding your brush in the monomer. But what that will do is that will cleanse and condition your brush. And then after you do that, because that'll you know suck out all of that product that's going to gunk up your brush and get your brush all nasty. And then you'll pull it out and then you'll wipe it on a clean section of paper towel. Do not wipe that freshly cleansed brush on a section of paper towel that's already been used because any little bits of acrylic on there that were, you know, just hanging out on the paper towel from when you wiped it previously are going to get in your brush and eventually cause some damage to your brush down the road. So you're holding your brush in your monomer and then you're wiping it. And you can do that to switch between colors. So don't necessarily, you don't have to like dip and then wipe and then dip and then wipe and then dip and then wipe because that's gonna go through a ton of monomer and a ton of paper towel space, which is wasteful on both counts of paper towel and monomer. But if you just hold your brush and leave it there, the monomer will do the job of cleaning your brush for you. And then you just have to wipe it once. And 99.9% .9 of the time, that's all that's needed. And if you find that your brush is starting to get a little bit gunky as you're working, sometimes that happens, especially for me if I'm in a hurry for something or I'm trying to sculpt something that's really big and I'm grabbing huge beads of acrylic, sometimes my brush will get a little bit sticky feeling as I'm working with it. The best thing to do in that circumstance is put your brush in your monomer, leave it there, 30 seconds to a minute, just wait, wait it out, and then wipe your brush off and most of the time, that's all that's needed, especially if you catch it before that acrylic fully hardens and it's just in that kind of sticky stage. That is like a surefire cure for that acrylic brush problem, which is really kind of a lifesaver because if you are somebody that, you know, just you're learning how to use acrylic or you just have a tendency to get your brushes sort of uh, sticky and stuck together, you can go through brushes fast because they can get messed up so quickly. So that little tip and trick may help you out. Who knows? It could work. But uh, yeah, otherwise, as you're switching between colors, that's the best the best thing for that. And even for this, as I'm going from, I just did a whole bunch of her coat and her hair with white, and then I did that little bit of the inside layer of her sleeves with red. Red is another notoriously pigmented color that could mess up the color of her arms of acrylic. Same thing, I just leave my brush in my monomer for a little while, and it'll take all that color out, and you don't really have to worry about it. So I haven't had issues too terribly much with switching colors in a very long time since I started doing that. So if it's not something you've ever tried, give that a try. Otherwise, the next best thing that you can do is you can go ahead and have two kinds of monomer, two bottles of monomer or jars, dap additions, and have one for dark colored things like red and black, and then a different dap and dish for your whites and your creams and your clears. And hopefully that would be another solution for you because sometimes your monomer can get pretty thick too with pigment. So if you find that that's more your issue, then maybe that's a better route to take. So after that, I sculpted her arms separately from the design and then I picked them up and placed them down. The reason for that is that her arms are there's a lot of texture that are underneath where her arms will go. And if you didn't just sculpt them to the side, if you tried to sculpt them directly on the design and just kind of go from there, they're going to have this really funky wavy texture to them. And they're going to look like they're sunken into the design more. But if you sculpt them separately and place them on top, you get this much more kind of realistic lofty look. And I love that look so much more. So that's the route I took, but either way really does work. You just might have to do a couple more layers of acrylic to get the same effect with just sculpting it directly 
on top of it. And then you're going to want to also sculpt the palms of her hands. Don't worry about the fingers yet. You can do those later. And then going back to my white acrylic, I'm going to be sculpting the first layer to her purse. So she's got this purse that hangs down that has these foxtails on the front of it. And to do that with the layers, we're going to just first start with kind of a base and let that cure. You don't want to go on top of it and do a different layer right away. You want to give that first one a chance to really solidify before you start messing with it. And then you're also going to want to sculpt a teeny tiny little puppy with white acrylic that will eventually sit in the palm of her hand. And when you're sculpting your little puppy, look at the size of her hand and try to make it so that the puppy will actually fit in her palm. And so the puppy has to be very, very small, almost to the point where adding details later on is a challenge because it is so tiny. And even sculpting things right now, I didn't overdo details like arms and legs. I kept it very sort of bare minimum as far as what I sculpted in for details on my puppy because there just wasn't the space to do much more. And then on the purse with a golden color acrylic, I'm going to be adding that top clasp bar and then it has like that little ball clasp on the very, very top of it. So add another little sphere of that golden acrylic there. And then I'm going to sculpt in that first foxtail coming down in the middle. So do one and then same thing, kind of let that solidify and come back to it. And as you're doing that, I'm going to do a little bit more detail on my puppy. I'm one of those people that couldn't just leave it alone. I had to come back to it and add just a slight more, but really there's not too much that you can do. And if you didn't want to go through and add more, don't worry about it. Just leave it be because it's perfectly fine the way it is. So the first puppy I did is just sitting down like you would imagine a traditional way that a puppy would sit. The second one I did, he's more like on his back so that all four feet are sort of pushed forward and up in the air a little bit like she's cradling him in her hand. So I've got the second one started there. Again, just keep in mind sizing as you're sculpting so that you don't end up with a puppy that's proportionally too big and you want them to end up being about eye to eye. So as you're sculpting this whole thing, just keep looking back and forth kind of paying attention to palm size and then how much space you have going up so that your puppy does end up about eye to eye with Cruella. We're going to be adding as much as we really want to of the little feet on the second one coming down. A lot of these details are probably easier to just paint in anyway. So if you don't want to sculpt them, then don't worry about them. Just make sure that you have the basic outside shape and the ears. I would do the ears with black just so that they show up nicely and vividly and have that 3D 3D detail that you're looking for. And on the little foxtails on her purse, add a black tip to each one with black acrylic, just like so. And then add the little black ears on your puppy. Give them the, the final the final touches on the other one. And then once all of this stuff has cured, because these little bits that are on the nail form backing are curing as, as you're working. You're going to pick up one, start with wherever you began. So for me, I'm going to start with the purse. I'm going to pick it up and that one puppy that I did first is going to be set to. And you can glue each of those pieces in place on the nail. And you want to make sure that as you're gluing them, you, you know, you plan it out and you place them exactly where they need to go right from the beginning because the nail glue will set up very quickly. If there's any sort of moisture left in this, if they aren't cured 100% where there's no moisture left in the acrylic at all, the, the nail glue will grab onto that moisture and it will stick much faster. So the nail glue is like a little moisture grabber. So if you want something to stick really quick with nail glue, if you have something that's just a little bit wet, like even um, a paper towel to wipe on something to give it some moisture, that'll make your nail glue stick faster. But you also run the risk then of having a white cloudy effect to it. So it's kind of a, a lose, lose or a win-win <laughs> maybe depending on your situation. But now we're going to go back through with our puppies and we're going to give or with Cruella, and we're going to give her her fingers that are wrapped around the puppies. So when you're doing those little fingers, you don't have to worry about doing like each individual finger, just kind of do the general shape of her hands, add fingers and thumbs, and then later with paint, you can go through and do the details to her. So we're going to glue this little Cruella form that we have onto the nail. And then after you have that and it's glued down, you're going to extend her dress, like I said before, I knew that I was going to end up extending her dress so I didn't have to worry about doing too much of the details to the dress lower before. So just take some more of that black acrylic and just brush it down and give it a fade. So her 
the way I, I intended to make her coat is to have it sort of swirl around the tip of the nail. So that actual little bit of black dress that's showing lower isn't going to be very much. It's just a little bit. And you want it to have a nice smooth transition from what you sculpt on your nail form backing to what you're sculpting on the actual nail. So then take large, large beads of white acrylic and place them down and then sort of swirl and wrap them around the nail. That first one at the top is kind of a little bit awkward just to sort of get it blended in to what you had pre-sculpted before. And it takes a little bit of finessing to get it to look quite right. And there's going to be one on each side. So there's going to be one from each side of her coat that you have to kind of blend up in and get to look like they belong. So it doesn't look awkward like it's partially sculpted in one place and partially sculpted in another. You want it to just look like one continuous piece that just happens to be really dimensional and sticking up off of the nail. And then we're going to do the next section. So her whole coat, if you look at it from the back, has like these panels that come down. And that's basically what we're sculpting here is the different panels of her coat that are swirling around her legs. Here's the next one. And just fill them in to whatever length you have available on the tip of the nail. If that's two of these little sections, that's two. If it's one, it's one. If it's seven, it's seven. For me, it's four. So whatever just fills in, you want the nail to be completely covered in these little swirling coat, coat bits working on this you want to kind of keep an eye on on this nail from all different angles you want to look at it from the left and from the right and make sure that there isn't any weirdness or awkward places that need to have a bit more adjustment because you never know and you want this nail to be viewable from all angles so you need to check it from all angles as well so if you see something that needs to be fixed fix it and then just move on and hopefully it won't be too much and it'll all look you know all continuous like there isn't some weird starting and stopping points on it i'm gonna add a little, a little bit more to the coat sleeve give it a little bit more height a little bit more dimension kind of got blended into that one part of the coat and then after you have all of that sculpting done i'm going to switch out my white acrylic for some clear acrylic and fill in behind her as you can see the whole her whole head and torso stick up off of the nail actually quite a ways. It's up to like about a quarter of an inch there in the one spot. There's a pretty big gap behind her and you want to fill that in with clear acrylic so that there isn't any weak spots. You want this to be very strong so that if she were to get bumped from the front, it wouldn't crack or wouldn't break. So fill in that entire area behind her with clear. Make sure that you fill in behind the puppies with clear. You want the whole thing to be just really durable and really strong. And now for the last little bit of detail we're going to be doing to our Cruella nail, we're going to be doing the details with acrylic paint. And when you're doing all these details with acrylic paint, my recommendation would be to not use gel. And I know that I've been saying acrylic paint, but I just want to clarify, don't use gel paint. Gel paint does not work very well on top of acrylic that hasn't been buffed and filed and smoothed and even applied some gel base coat. So don't use and don't try to use gel paint, just use acrylic paint. And there's some that is specifically made for nails, which in my personal opinion, isn't necessary to purchase. I would just buy the stuff from your craft store that is made for art projects. And I mean, that is what I use and it works beautifully, but use acrylic paint because it'll just paint over your acrylic designs so much better. And if you've only been trying to do your designs with gel polish or gel paint on top of your acrylic and you've never tried acrylic paint, give it a try. Most people that I know love it. And a lot of people say that once I started using it, things just became a lot easier. So just give it a try if you haven't before. So once I have some of the shading done on her coat and I've got some gray layers and then some white layers and give it just a little bit more dimension, I'm going to be going through with some black paint and adding all of the spots to the coat. And I know the Cruella never actually gets her spotted coat because her plan gets messed up and her coat is never produced. It is just such an, icon um, an iconic look to have that Dalmatian spotted coat. So we're going to be doing it that way, even though it's not really how, how it goes in the film. But I just absolutely love the look of it. So there we have it. And then I'm going to take some red and I'm going to be adding just a little bit of a darker red shading around her arms inside the sleeves just to deepen that area up a little bit. Instead of that really bright cherry red, it becomes more of a a darker blood red and then with some black paint again we're going to be doing all sorts of outlining so you're going to want to outline the different layers of her coat on her sleeves you're going to want to outline you know the details of her purse on her hands on the puppies on her face there's basically details everywhere 
And I know for me that whenever I start doing outlines and I know that there's a lot of them to do, it can become very overwhelming just because you look at the whole picture and you're thinking, oh my goodness, there's so many tiny lines. How am I going to get them in there? So what I like to do is I like to just start someplace and then build off of that. Start on her arms and do both of her arms. And then once you have that done, then you can move on to everything that is easy and just keep doing the easy parts and then eventually all you have left is maybe the parts that you think are a little bit more difficult like adding in her facial features like her mouth and her eyes but if you have everything else kind of started in first those last little bits don't seem so overwhelming they seem like they're just the last final finishing details and I know for me the last few details I think are the most uh, fun because you can really see the design come together usually in those last couple steps and there's just well, a level of excitement there. So you can get a little bit more encouragement from those last steps if you save save the less fun things for the end. But I'm going to do her facial features. For her eyelids, I decided to do kind of a blue-green gradient. So I first started in filling them in with a very bright limey green, and then I'm going to take a tealy blue color and add just a little bit of a secondary color on her lids to give them a bit of an ombre. And that adds a lot of three-dimensional quality to the eyes, even though they weren't sculpted. So it just makes them look a little bit, a little more dimensional. Add the red on her lips. Do a really nice bright red on her lips with red paint. And then I'm going to go through and we also have to add all of our, our little details to our puppies. And so I'm going to do a little pink in their ears where it would show and then go through with their facial features. And the one thing that's kind of weird with the puppies is that they have all these black spots. So things like their noses and their eyes seem to be a little less vivid just because there's black spots all over the puppies. So the black spots that are something like eyes are a little less noticeable. So when you're doing that, try to make the spots on their fur a little bit smaller than the spots on on the rest of their bodies just to kind of make sure that those more important spots are still more visible or even dilute your paint a little bit so that the black spots on their fur is just a little less intense looking than their eyes and their nose so that those details that you really want to show up look a little bit more intense. Add some outlines to her hands, separate her fingers a little bit, give her palm a little line right at the heel of her hand and then do the same thing for the other side outline the other puppy, the other fingers, give the puppies, you know, all of their details and spots on the other side too. I really love this design, you guys. And if you guys missed my previous Cruella designs, like I said, I will put them all in the description box below. But there is one that I just did for the new movie that I uploaded just this week. And um, that one is from the new one, like I said, and it is a portrait of Emma Stone as Cruella in that very intense where she's just like face forward on. I love that one. So I'll put a link to that one too right at the top of my description box so that you guys can find that one easily. If you did happen to miss it, definitely look for that one because I am so proud of that one. And yeah, I like it. You should you should see it if you haven't is what I'm what I'm going for here. But otherwise, we're going to finish her off with the last couple details, a few more spots here and there, a little bit of outlining on her purse. And if you guys made this design or you even just finished this video, this one is really long. Uh, give yourselves a pat on the back. I love your dedication to my channel. Um, this design took me a really long time to make as well as just the fact that it took a long time and I didn't want to edit the video to miss anything important. So that's why this one is kind of a kind of a long one. But the last final things I'm going to do to just the nail itself is I'm going to apply some jewelry gel in the background and then a layer of top coat over that glittery red acrylic to make sure that the glittery red shows up as super sparkly and then press a series of red and silver rhinestones into that background and make them just give a little bit more glitz and glamour. Quill is all about flashiness and showiness and she wants it to be as glamorous as possible. So how could we avoid any crystals or rhinestones? That's just a necessary element. Once you have those in, cure it and then brush a thin layer of lacquer, of matte top coat lacquer over Ms. Cruella. And that is it for this entire nail. You guys, I am in love. This one needs to be a necklace or something. It is just so pretty. I hope you guys love it as much as I do. Please comment with any uh, questions, thoughts, anything that you may have for me. I'm happy to answer them and I will see you guys all next time. Bye.